one of the things Amazon has is Echo, right? So some of you might be having already your little voice assistant at home. And one of the things that you can do with a voice assistant is actually order stuff. You can actually buy things, right? And if you're buying something that is, let's say, like toothpaste or toilet paper, where you might not care so much about the brand you are getting, you might start turning to your, you know, little Amazon friend at home and like, I just ran out of toilet paper. Can you just get me more? Now, what does Echo choose for you? Which brands, right? Which exact product? And imagine you are a toilet paper manufacturer or a brand. How do you deal with that? All of a sudden, you are completely cut out of discussion, right? You're not actually being able to promote, you know, like you can do on the shelf, or you, you can do all the advertising in the world, but you're not even part of the discussion anymore. What we are trying to do today is get those companies back to that startup mentality put the customer back in the center. And one of the things I hear a lot from our, from our clients is that we have more information, we have the big data, but we know less. So the solution obviously here is that to be able to bring that level of dynamism, that your segmentation is not updated once every four years anymore, but you're actually staying in touch with your consumers on an ongoing basis. And the good news is that you can do that today. You can do that with natural language processing. Some of you already might be familiar with some of the even simpler Python algorithms and the deep neural networks in you know, a bit more advanced level to understand what people do and how they do. I'll just give you one example. Instead of asking people, what did you eat last Tuesday? You can actually ask them right in that moment, what are you doing right now? That's it. That's what we call unstructured data, right? You get text, you get images, you get videos, no categorical variables anymore, no surveys, no multivariable, you know, big uh, questions and stuff that you have to sit through for like 40 minutes. Instead, all you're doing as the consumer is that just show me, no claimed behavior, just show me what's going on in your life. And all that information using image recognition, voice recognition, and as Chris was mentioning earlier, you don't even have to build that technology. It's third party, it's out there. Most of these companies even allow you to use it for free until you reach actually a certain volume, which helps a lot of small companies to be able to you know, come to world. And you take all that data, and then you start analyzing and understanding rather than using, you know, I'm an ex-consultant, we used to use like multivariate regression models to be able to, you know, predict or segment. But instead, you can today use a multi-dimensional universe where you don't even have hypotheses anymore. You don't even have to make assumptions, right? And the result that comes out of that is actually mind-blowing. I'll again share with you one that I'm allowed to share. In one of the studies we've done with one of our clients, what we saw is that different segments actually emerge out of different set of independent variables. I don't want to go te too technical, don't want to bore you guys, but usually like once you run a regression model, you're going to end up with a set of variables which then gives you your entire segmentation, right? All six, eight, whatever it is, are actually driven by the same set of variables not anymore, right? Using machine learning algorithms, you can now run millions of permutations. That does require a bit of computation power, but you can do that within a matter of two, three days. And the machine tries every single permutation that is possible to identify correlations. It turns out that you, your dinner choice may not be so much driven by how healthy you want to be, or even are you married or not, or do you have kids or not, but the fact that you have console in your hand and you're playing Destiny, and actually you don't want something greasy, right? And you just want something, I don't know how many gamers we have in the room, but I'm sure you are you know, sympathizing with the situation. You don't want to get greasy hands on a console, that's just really not cool. So what we actually found here is that there was 5%, right? This is American population, 5% of American adult population was engaged in this behavior, what we call one-handed diners, right? They are gamers, they're just gonna grab a whole bunch of food which is not gonna like stick in their hands and they want something that is what we call sequential snacking. They don't want like big meals that they are going to eat in one go and they're gonna keep eating. But what they need is like food filling food, so we're talking about probably more nuts rather than crisps, and they will keep going all day long. What does now that give you? 
the whole thing started with a company coming and telling us that snacking is saturated. It can't be innovated anymore. Like there is nothing new left that we haven't done before, right? And there isn't. It's just about how we listen to the consumer. So if we allow them to be able to actually surface and tell us what's really going on in their lives, we can navigate that level of complexity and respond to that, even in a sector like food and beverage or FMCG, which is quite hard to move. Thanks. Thank you.